What I'd like to share with all of you is that um, there's a lot of change in the offshore world. And we've been uh, tracking that for the last several years. And uh, I'm really uh, keen to see what you guys think about this change. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is how has this game changed? All right? And the way this game has changed is, is that it has moved from becoming a game of numbers to becoming a game of human beings. That's the biggest change. And this whole uh, conversation about uh, Agile that uh, Saket was presenting, the move from traditional to the new uh, world, is being accelerated right now. And it's moving faster than before. One of the aspects of this movement is actually the kind of people that are entering the workforce. The kind of people who are coming into the offshore game are very agile. They, they come with the agile skills. Their style of thinking is highly social. Their style of behavior is highly collaborative. And you know, we, when we talk about people, I'll say more, there is a hunger for agile that's completely new. And while India has actually won the offshore development game by sheer size of numbers, this new style of hunger is one about relationships. How to expand the scope of relationships for each individual that's working in this uh, uh, setting. So let's look at some of that. And Praveen, if you could just go to the next slide. It's also beginning in the mothership. You know, this is a customer of ours. They have 15,000 offshore development workers spread all over India. It started with them first. If you're able to see the wording on that elephant, it says, am I agile? The year is 2013, I believe, and this manager is actually a VP or a senior VP. He's talking to all his uh, colleagues who are running these projects in India. And he is asking them, are we agile, or am I agile in this case? And I think it's the beginning of change in the mothership. You know, and a lot of the people that we spoke to in India say that the customer needs to be agile. Or in the case of Sake's presentation, the manager needs to be agile. Well, I'm here to say that the customers are definitely questioning themselves and their own uh, agileness. And they're looking for help. And I think this is the beginning of this new, new offshore development game. The key change we are noticing with these customers, which is completely different from the previous behavior. I've personally been in the offshore business since 1997. Right? The key change is that for the first time, the customer is admitting that they do not know what needs to be done. In the earlier case, the customer came in as an expert, someone who knows and was expecting work to be done as per the instructions, guidelines, requirements, whatever. This is completely different. It's an invitation to co-create the offshore development game. And it's an invitation to be part of something new that's going to happen. I think that's a very, very significant change in the uh, state of the mothership. Okay? I have my colleague Susan here. You know, you've worked with a lot of motherships. You've worked with a lot of uh, offshore development companies. Do you want to talk about this? Uh, come on, please join us and talk about the state of newness in the customer. Yeah, you know, um, kind of traditionally, as Raj said, it's coming from outside of India and then influencing here. And what I really believe that's happening is there's a shift going on that because of the scale that's going on here and because of the emergence of India as a true kind of market player and market leader, we're seeing that it's getting a lot of momentum and energy coming from, from here and, and influencing outside of that, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And, and the most significant change I can tell you that I observe is that the leaders of the mothership are asking for coaching. They're asking for help. They're asking for training. They're asking for um, 
how can I be a better manager? There are several of these um, you know, organizations that we are talking to where they have leadership centers of competency. Coaching for leaders is now a regular part of the game. You know? So if you have customers that you're already working with, find out who is coaching them. I think that's a way to change the game for you. Right? Next slide, please. Thanks, Praveen. All right. So now we are going to talk about the new, new offshore services provider. And I have two awesome customers sitting right here. Let's start with you, Vandana, in a minute. Uh, are you OK if I say that you're from TCS? OK, I've already said it. Right? So if the mothership is changing, the offshore services provider has to change. It's, it's very important for that dynamic to happen. And there is a tension in the offshore services companies right now like never before. You know, if you read the reports, if you read the financial uh, outcomes of these companies, if you see the changes in management, if you see the pace at which leaders from offshore services companies are moving to startups, right? That disruption is coming from agile, okay? So uh, Vandana, why don't you say a few words about your experience and any other provocative thoughts that you'd like to share with these people? Nandana, uh, Vandana is a nuisance, by the way, so he'll help. Thanks, Ashok. Great introduction. Now I don't know what to say. Everything I say will be a nuisance. Yes. So um, um, let me start with uh, my journey on uh, uh, the Agile path. So I, uh, uh, I've taken up a new role in uh, TCS. I've been about 12 months onto it, where we are looking at how we can transform our company and make it more Agile. So it's not about Agile with an A. It's really Agile with a small, uh, smaller A. We want to bring more agility in what we do. So uh, if you look at um, uh, all the public information, everything which is available on agility, on, on agile, any methodology, they are more biased towards product cons uh, companies or customer doing things internally. There's less, uh, less of text available for people like us who are offshore, uh, uh, who are service providers. So that is where we have to start. We almost started from scratch and uh, what uh, uh, we understand, just like Siraj, I completely agree with Siraj, that we are standing at a point, at an inflection point, where it's very important for us to transform ourselves first and make sure we don't miss this bus, right? We, this is, we've been the leaders in the, this whole journey towards IT servicing. We have to be the leaders in the next uh, generation also when we look at uh, Agile. So um, I'm just uh, coming from um, uh, something, some pilot we did uh, in uh, TCS where we are saying that all the recruitments which we are doing, all the, all the college freshers which are joining, mm -hmm. we'll make them uh, train only on Agile, we'll not teach them anything traditional. And we've just done a, completed a pilot uh, last month and I was just uh, sharing this with Siraj that uh, I totally agree with him, this is a social movement and Somehow the new generation is uh, taking to, to it like fish to water. It's, it's, comes, it's coming very easily to them on uh, how to work, uh, how to be agile, how to collaborate, how not to compete with yourself uh, and your uh, fellow mates, how to be more uh, collaborative, and that's how we'll move forward. So very excited on this journey. Nothing for go with it. I'll leave it for the remainder awesome. of the Thank day. Thank you. I'll call you again. OK, so that's the services view. Let's look at the product view. This is a completely different. Uh, animal, okay. You you have a services giant. It's probably a Fortune 100 company. It could be, right? Maybe, right? And then you have a product-based company. So this is Abhishek, another client of mine. So you want to talk about your experience from a product company point of view? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Siraj, first of all, for inviting me. And yeah. I feel honored to uh, be here. Uh, and I sort of represent the mothership uh, out here in India from our company's perspective, and are dealing with uh, uh, with large uh, tier one uh, offshore vendors. So I sort of have a view of what goes on on the mothership side, as well as what goes on on the uh, service industry yeah. side of the business as well. Uh, so I think uh, on the product company side, uh, the benefits are, um, there are several benefits. Um, we actually are into the agile transformation. We have been uh, uh, in the waterfall way of working, uh, hybrid waterfall way of working for last six years. And uh, the, uh, the company itself, as well as the entire offshore team, uh, were in that, used, were used to working in that fashion. 
So we took this large uh, agile transformation, rather safe agile transformation initiative uh, six months back. So we are still learning. Uh, we, are, we are into it. Uh, the benefits that definitely are seen, uh, firstly at the business level, is uh, earlier when product management used to say, uh, we want something to be done. It used to, the, the feedback that they used to get was, okay, come after one year, we'll give this to you, right? Now they have the agility, they know the budget, how much they have to spend. They can do something in a week, in a 10 weeks time and get results whether that is something which will have acceptability in the market or not. So the time to market has shrinked from years to really weeks, right? Uh, that's the benefit at the business level. Uh, at, the, at the team level itself, there's a huge, huge benefit. The teams feel more empowered, though there, there is that inertia that they have from the past, both for the teams that are, that are in the mothership, as well as for teams which are offshore. We are, we are um, the biggest challenge really in our, in our case is uh, that we are, uh, we are spread across five locations geographically uh, uh, geographically uh, apart as well as uh, each of these ships each of these uh, locations had very had 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 specific skill sets at each of those locations so each of our teams actually get spread across five locations so those kind of challenges we are still going through uh, coming to the service side of it where the companies um, where uh, yes, the companies have a lot of motivation to go into Agile. The teams feel a lot of value in learning Agile going from waterfall. Uh, the management is really pushing for it. The companies are actually going to the extent of investing, so uh, investing in a lot of training. The entire teams go through a lot of training. All that is great. Uh, however, the inertia of the management. So uh, for simple things, where Agile says that if you plan for something uh, at the beginning of the, uh, during your planning meeting, and things change over a period of time, right? Uh, you realize during the, during, the, uh, during the PI or the sprint itself that it wasn't, it cannot be delivered. Uh, what should you do? The offshore teams would typically come back and say, um, rather, the managers would come back and say, you have to deliver, mm. right? The managers and them, the delivery managers and them, we cannot go and tell the client that we made a commitment 10 weeks back yeah. and we will not be able to deliver it, right? Whereas the mothership is very, very open in our case specifically that, oh. okay, if, 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 if you're not able to do it, give yeah. us a justification, move it out to the next All time. the motherships that I know are very open. Right. And people are discovering this open relationship. Like I've seen a lot of offshore teams and mothership members fighting. That's what I look for in this new, new offshore development game. In the old game, they would hide the disagreement. Exactly. In the new game, they fight openly because they know that they have space. Right. We, we, we probably are still going in that yeah. way where our managers, though we know that they are holding back, yeah. but they are still trying to really keep it to themselves, try to manage yeah. all of it on our own. Yeah. And, uh, so that's, that's some bit of challenges that we are going through. I think it's a long journey. Uh, in a short span of six months, we are seeing a lot of yeah. benefits of it. Yeah. Uh, the teams themselves feel a lot more relaxed uh, to work in a sustainable fashion. So great. All that is great. Thanks a lot. I'll call on you again in yeah. a few minutes. All right. So, so what I want to share with you is that this is happening. It's happening now, and it's coming very fast at uh, what I would call as the Indian offshore market in multiple places. What would you say? You're from Pitney Bowes, right? Do you say, see that in your uh, offshore development, uh, what I would call as a captive, right? You're a captive. You're not an offshore company. You're not a product company. You're a captive, right? What, what do you see? And you know, just take a second to introduce yourself also, Hari. Yeah, thanks, uh, Siraj. I'm Hari Krishna Varma and uh, from Pitney Bowes uh, as engineering manager and agile coach. Uh, and we are captive, uh, rightly said. So uh, I see this change uh, happening. And in 
in our case because we are captive so a mothership really realized that yeah there is value in offshore and having center uh, at a place where we can get some different advantage where the ad, uh, energy of the people is there and if we work collaboratively with that audience then definitely we will give that value to our clients as well and that is where i think uh, it, it, this game is different from pure offshore and yeah. pure product development yeah. but uh, we see we collaborate more with our mothership and we feel it's a mothership itself here yes it's not a different entity in india and we don't call ourselves as a offshore development center and okay. that is what i see yeah thanks sari we'll look at this a little bit more differently so if you don't mind praveen next slide please this is you know i decided to use a different format this time because of this new new offshore development game i'm noticing a pattern a pattern of selfies there is just a lot of selfies being taken and published and every time people meet and you know do their work there is just a lot of social camaraderie interaction and energy being uh, generated that that bulk of energy is coming from india and it's i think shaking up the traditional software delivery product delivery or services delivery kind of approach right next slide please thank you all right here is the new new offshore agile change agent this is the person that's making the change by the way if you see that guy in the middle he's probably somewhere here uncle see how he's laughing you know um, they're very happy it's a big difference very happy people very creative people very powerful people and they know that they can influence the mothership they know that they can influence the managers right very stark difference from the other uh, approaches and this is the kind of change agents that we are looking for to to take us to the next level of the offshore development game hi all right next slide please there's i think uh, more uh, agile change agents you know it's really important you know amitabh is there you can see a lot of the people who are in this game you know they really looking for personal transformation okay so the way i look at the new new offshore development game it's the personal transformation game it is about the enterprise transformation but first it's about the individual transformation and then it's about interpersonal transformation there is a hunger as i said right there is a hunger for a better relationship with another human being whether that human being is a client or a manager i love that empathy map exercise where is saket by the way you know i really love it right hi saket right so what if we had an empathy map with every human relationship in the offshore development business i think it will change the dynamic of this world right all right next slide please thank you praveen all right so we are looking for three types of change agents in our work right to to fuel the new new offshore development game we are looking for what we call as an x cat or executive change agent we want this person right in that slide that i showed you with the elephant that person sitting there he is the executive change agent who is sponsoring and putting his face on the line for this new style of working we are looking for a lot of internal change agents in like hundreds hundreds and then we are looking for external change agents who have got experience all right so let me offer this to you first vandana what is your experience of identifying grooming the new new change agents okay so uh, my experience would uh, be more on uh, xcat and yeah. icat yeah. less on icat um, so when we uh, said that we need to uh, transform uh, tcs we uh, said we cannot uh, do it the traditional way you do a transformation program where you get a swat team you make them dedicated to this and uh, then that's how that's centrally how you do things because just by a sheer scale it's not possible to do it uh, just by just creating a team of dedicated people we need to uh, push things out we need to push things out to different people we want to have a network of teams so that's where uh, this concept was uh, very useful when we talk about icat so our goal was that we should have uh, 
uh, agile evangelists throughout TCS at every location, every unit, every, every um, uh, room, every location, uh, every building, every floor, we should have enough people and we should be able to uh, enable them. So whether it's um, technical training, whether it's telling them uh, uh, just go ahead, take some risk, we are there to support you. So that's how this uh, ICAT is a very power. It's a very powerful concept uh, which you would need. Uh, generally, if you look at uh, even our customers, a lot of people think that uh, if you want to bring change, you need to, uh, you need to get people from outside experts who will come and talk about it, and uh, and suddenly everyone will get change. It doesn't happen that way, especially if you're looking at change at a company which is so diverse and which is uh, so spread out. Uh, different time zone, different locations, different uh, pieces of work. If we are customer centric, means that uh, a TCS has, if we have 2,000 customers, we have actually, we are a conglomerate of 2,000 companies. companies. Yep. So every culture, every company has a different culture. Every uh, So every all of us are sort of uh, looking at our customers, so that culture is different from, let, let's say, overall TCS culture. So that's why today we have uh, evangelists uh, in every unit, every account. Every, every location, every floor, and we are able to identify them and enable them and tell them what they need to do so to create many more change agents. Awesome. So, so you know, um, XCAT, we can talk sure, about. sure, go for it. Yeah. So, XCAT uh, is uh, uh, something where uh, we needed uh, uh, we needed people who are very passionate. So, generally, you will equate passion with uh, energy with younger people. So uh, we, we also said we also want people who have influence because XCAT, you cannot have passionate people who don't have influence. You cannot walk up to uh, Chandra and open his door and say you're wrong. We don't need such, such people. So there we did a selection process, but that also was more on volunteering where we identified people. Last 18 months, we've been grooming those people to be able to uh, get a seat on the business heads table and talk about uh, change. Sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. So we're using all calm, down, done, paid, everything to make sure you get that across. Awesome. No, no, please continue. Okay. I want to ask you some yeah. question, right, and then uh, make sure that we cover this, right? Yeah. I look at internal change agents, and you know, you rightly said they're at every floor. I look at internal change agents as um, very uh, uh, solid and grounded citizens of the company that can absorb the suffering, you know. I call these people as co-sufferers. You know, like if you know the Indian concept of Rudali, they come and they cry when you're going through a funeral, right? So these people are able to absorb the suffering of enterprise agile transformation. Have you seen that as a phenomenon? Yeah, yeah, but more, more and more we are saying you're not supposed to absorb it, you're supposed to throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. And then the ex-cat, you know, the executive, it's about really bringing the power of the offshore development team, the whole team, all the abilities to the customer, not just the delivery capability, yes. but now the product management capability, the leadership capability, the change capability, the technical capability, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So another thing what we've done is we've made sure that uh, uh, these uh, the, the ex-cats we picked, along with uh, being grounded in TCS culture, yeah. There are also people who are uh, uh, not uh, married to uh, TCS so much that uh, they, they, don't, they, they are not able to see the mirror and see that we need to change. So we, it's not that we, and we thought, okay, these people are going to be good change agents and we stuck to them throughout. There's been a lot of upheaval in this and there's been a lot of places where we have chosen wrong people and we yeah. messed it up and we have to change people. Yeah. Some of the people have themselves realized that they are too much into the system. They, are not, they, are, they themselves are finding it very difficult to go through this personal change. So all of us, we are about uh, 55 uh, change agents. Who it's been a personal journey for uh, all of us, and we like that's where that's where we are very well connected because all of us understand the journey we've gone through. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. So moving from talking about change agents to let's talk about this man. Another, I would call him as an external change agent, the new new Dean Leffingwell. You know, if organizations are transforming themselves, which is the mothership and then the offshore service providers are reinventing themselves. I think this man is also reinventing himself constantly. And, you know, you can see him. You'll never see him in a picture like this. You know, he's very straight and, and laced, but now he's hugging people, you know. That's me, Susan, and other people over there. So I just thought that, you know, I wanted to share that, you know, the mindset of everyone is changing. The mindset of everyone involved in this is changing. Next slide, please. And, this version of Scaled Agile, which we have taken to all these companies and others that we have been talking about, is new. It's the new, new safe, actually. 
it started off with version one, it's in version four now, constantly improving and adding information and, and knowledge based on what they're learning. And one of the biggest areas of learning is the new, new offshore development game. Like, I believe that India will be the number one destination for scaled agile framework in a few years. You know. And I'll share more. Um, you know, uh, one of the certifications that we offer is the SCC training. We've probably done about, I'd say, maybe I'd say 300 plus uh, people we've trained over here. A lot of them are here actually in this room. And it's about bringing a new style of change agent tree. That's really important, a new style of change agent tree. All right, next slide, please. All right, the new, new China, okay. If there's one thing that can change this apple cart, it's the new, new China. These are all uh, Chinese people that Susan, Amitabh, and I trained, and we had a blast. We had a blast with them. And what we are noticing is that their agileness is equal to our agileness. All right? Next slide, please. Here are they playing some games. You know, they did not have the right equipment and the tools for the game, but they had absolutely no problem playing these games and really showing their uh, customers how they wanted to do work. I think the power of the new, new offshore development game is going to be India plus China. That's what this game is. You know, we first did the work and the uh, launching of the work in Bangalore, and then we went to Shanghai to do this, right? I think the combination of India and China is, is hugely powerful, right? Okay, next slide, please. And then this is us. This is my team. A lot of them are here. Please come by, say hello, and talk to us. Uh, and we'd love to share ideas with you. And Atul, if you're here, we'd like to take a selfie with you also. You know, it's time to reinvent yourself. If you are a, a software and a agile consulting group like Eisenbridge or us or others, you know, it's time to reinvent yourself. There is a new game happening here. It's really important to recognize the game, the customer game, the change agent game, the offshore services provider game, and the approach to business. I would say that the leading uh, change is in the level of generosity, in the level of giving. You know, like Piali said, you offer yourself, right? So I decided that we'll offer my poem book. It's not a brochure. There is no need for us to talk business with you. But there is an invitation to share poems. And actually, if you open the book, there are also paintings. There's an invitation to a social conversation, an awesome human experience, right? Next slide, please. Um, this is a quick overview of uh, you know, how we would like to talk about Agile. We talk about creating those three types of change agents, the change agentry style. We want to change the style of change agentry in India. That's what we are doing here. Next slide, please. And then finally, we are here to tell you that it's possible. If you think that offshore and enterprise agile is not possible, we are here to tell you it's possible. Come and talk to us. We're ready to engage with you one-on-one. -on -one. All right, questions, please. Thank you, Piali. Questions? Vandana, Kumaradi. Thoda zor se bolo, But being TCS uh, technology company, uh, don't you think that uh, at the fresher level, they should have uh, knowledge on technology as well uh, for their future growth? Yeah, yeah. So when I say I'm teaching only Agile, what I meant was that we are not um, um, all the hands-on work which they are doing, they are doing with the Agile mode, not uh, using any uh, waterfall methodology to do that work. Technology, yes, we are teaching also. to different clients or different cultures. So what all challenges do you do you do you face on daily basis or on your uh, you know uh, how do you how do you actually bring the agile practices in service industry? So um, let me uh, rephrase your question. What you're asking is that uh, uh, maybe because of uh, the diversity or customer centricity we have, how do we make sure that uh, we are able to get agile practices in our day-to-day -day lives? Is this what you're asking? As far as the TCS as a company, as a service industry is concerned, because 
there are like four, uh, on the floor there are like 40 clients with like uh, like 10 teams and they have different culture they might be on agile or not on agile but as a tcs you are teaching your guys to be agile so how do you what kind of challenges do you so face? that's why we are differentiating uh, uh, in what you mean by agile we are not talking about um, uh, the, the new, only the new way of software development so that you need a vehicle for it you need to go to scrum or kanban or sage what we are talking about agility we are talking about behavior and practice so let's say we have a, 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 a large standing relationship where we do only legacy work. Why cannot we bring in more agility into it by, if nothing else, starting with ins inspect and adapt, starting with retrospective, starting with some practices. So we are trying to attack it at a behavior level. Of course, we are trying to uh, look at it from a software engineering purpose, uh, uh, practices purpose, from a uh, different, uh, what do you call it, technology wise, what are the different methodology, but we are looking at it from a behavior and culture aspect first because we think that will bring the change automatically. One question. So, yeah, so distributed agile is a whole, whole topic in itself. It's, it'll take, uh, I mean, we, it's something we can go on and on, okay? But uh, just two things I want to uh, uh, leave you with. One is that uh, there are, we've already cracked the uh, uh, distributed teams successful work, right? We know how distributed teams can work successfully, right? A lot of people carry forward all the problems of uh, which, they, which are unresolved on distributed teams, how they should work into Agile. So first of all, we should think about it only first you resolve the distributed teams problem. When, then when you move to Agile, you let, let it be something of a local problem, right? Even when you talk about time zones, we have a good uh, time zone share with uh, time share with uh, Europe, right? Our problem would start with West Coast or maybe Australia where we'll have to get up too early or they have to uh, they have to sort of stretch late or whatever, right? So it has to be localized to that level. So what we are doing is that we are not uh, uh, saying that, okay, this is, uh, this is uh, how you do distributed agile. We are actually uh, talking to different customers, looking at how we can do a cultural assimilation and bring out a model which works, works in that case. Because distributed teams are here to stay. We cannot say that Okay, now we are moving to Agile, we'll stop doing distributed teams work, we'll only do co-located work. So we have to look at it from case by uh, case on how we resolve it. You want, we can talk offline, this is like a huge topic and it's, it's very relevant to us because it's, it's uh, challenging our business model, right? Okay, so my question was, do you have any data on how many companies in India have actually implemented SAFE? I believe it's in the dozens right now, but there are more than a hundred companies that are piloting, okay? And most of the pilots are happening in Harish type of companies, what we call as captains. The TCS, large offshore style companies, they are, I believe, experimenting. And then you have a third type of company here, which is the mothership is sitting in India and looking at the work of the uh, offshore service providers. I would say you are more in a guidance and, and offering uh, obstacles because of the time zone difference and the challenges. Type is uh, very similar to where we consider the offshore teams as extension to our team. Yeah. So uh, there's there's a lot more focus from the mothership. Yeah. Uh, though staff augmentation happens offshore, but uh, the teams are very close. Yeah. The offshore teams end up being very close uh, to us. Yeah. But w the reason I pointed out Abhishek is because it's a new breed, right? There is offshore, there's captive, and then there's in between. Does that answer your question there? Okay. I mean, we can share as much as the data we have, but what we can tell you is that if you just look at the number of scaled agile professionals, if US is number one, India is a close number two, and based on just on the rate of expansion, we expect India to be number one very quickly. The third is very far away, by the way, just so that you know.
especially with words talked uh, about uh, from Tagore. And then uh, you mentioned one point, it's not about numbers, yeah. but about people. Yeah. And similarly to more things which are coming up, uh, team and collaboration, agility. So I think agile is not going to be limited to you know software development and uh, engineering aspects. But it is going to be a transformation, a cultural transformation uh, in organization and then transformation in the industry as well. Awesome. Thank you. And just to close, if it's okay with all of you, and then we are ready for a lot of off-site conversations, not offshore conversations. It's about cultural and enterprise transformation. Yeah? Once again, thank you very much. And please, thank yeah, you so uh, much to all our